Thank you very much. Uh, my name is uh, Malidadi Langa. I'm going to read the closing remarks of indigenous peoples, local communities uh, on the Negro APAC. Uh, your Excellencies, the Honorable Minister, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, cognizant of your honorable presence and participation in the various plenaries and side events that we have undertaken during this inaugural APAC, it is with great pleasure and satisfaction that I now deliver these closing remarks titled, We are inseparable from nature. We as in people. On behalf of indigenous peoples and local communities, IPLCs, gathered here and some already on the way back to their various countries. Our commitments. We commit to transferring knowledge and practices to preserve Mother Nature, to working in solidarity with those fighting to protect nature and limit climate change, to speaking up on our grievances and to present practical remedies with an open spirit, to promoting inclusive and accountable governance in our various institutions to ensure transparency and accountability that is conducive to safeguarding against elite capture and other abuses, to ensure that the post-2020 global biodiversity framework strongly incorporates the right to sustainable use of both flora and fauna. Our key messages. The dialogue has begun and must not end. While we have met and discussed with you over the past few days, we are not sure about how well you have heard us or understood us. However, we live knowing very well the necessity of building our own solidarity across the continent, through which we must reach out to you and in turn expect you to also reach out to us. As such, we leave this Congress confident that during the next APAC, we will meet as equal partners in conservation of Mother Nature. Empowerment, not participation. As shareholders, and not mere stakeholders in the business of taking care of Mother Nature, we seek empowerment and not mere participation so we can bring to bear our traditional knowledge, experiences, and solutions. In this regard, we seek, we seek a people-led approach to conservation in which people are firmly at the center of conservation, while governments and development partners actively play an empowering role. With such an, an empowering approach, we believe that we can put behind us undue tensions that have existed and continue to exist between IPLCs or communities and protected area authorities on the one hand, and between people and nature on the other hand. We must be clear that access to social services like education and health are essentially our right as citizens and not privileged benefits. Governments must therefore cease using benefit sharing arrangements from tourism and other uses of our customary resources as compensation for displacement. As our sister Alice Nyamihanda Ebatwa from Uganda tells us, we reject benefit sharing if it means giving up our lands. Decolonizing conservation. Consistent with our aspiration to empowerment as opposed to mere participation, we seek decolonization of conservation 
through abolition of policies and laws that perpetuate neo-colonial approaches to conservation that seek to separate, to separate us from nature on which we depend and lead to militarization of protected uh, spaces. While being the continent's major land and resource dependence, we have demonstrated our ability to take care of Mother Nature through the community managed or community owned uh, parks and protected areas, forest reserves, four shores, and inland mm. waters. Our specific ASICs. Once in your various destinations, please act on the following specific requests from governments. Advance IPLC efforts to recognize and respect the customary corrective tenure rights of IPLCs. This should start by implementing the 2003 World Parks Congress Durban Accord and Action Plan and the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples by prioritizing the restitution of runs and redress where sought and needed and refrain from establishing new protected areas. Begin, or if you have already begun, accelerate legal recognition of customary collective ownership of our lands and resources, our territories of life, without whose security our efforts to conserve and sustain uh, Mother Nature are undermined. End militarization of protected area spaces, violence and human rights abuses, including endless eviction and displacement of IPLCs, and bring all offenders to book. Put in place policies and laws that would compel conservation funders and other agencies to take responsibility to ensure direct funding of IPLC organizations and not to fund organizations and actions that do not respect rights-based approaches to conservation. Respect and implement international and regional decisions of the African Union mechanisms, structures, and work towards honoring these judgments, recognizing that justice delayed is justice denied. Recognize IPLC tenure rights as a strategy to achieve 30 by 30 targets. <clears throat> to our development partners, support projects and programs that promote secure land and resource rights for IPLCs, acknowledging that sustainable conservation is not possible without that stable and incentivizing foundation. Stop funding pro projects and programs that do not meet the free, plio and informed consent of IPLCs, including women and youth, because these are often the projects or actions that promote uh, human rights abuses. Make available direct funding to IPLCs and their organizations to ensure that funds are directed at the, at the level of impact. To our conservation organizations, decolonize conservation and redefine the concept of protected areas, particularly category six that upholds the national enforcement of creating protected areas. Protected and conserved areas is a good starting point, but there is an urgent need to dispel militarization of protected areas and promote people and promote people, land uh, and tenure relationships and nature relationships. Apply FPIC and ensure prioritization of funding for community-led conservation efforts led by I IPLCs and their organizations. To researchers, the media, and academia, 
you must right the wrong of misrepresentation that you have propagated by producing films, documentaries, research articles, etc., that showcase an African conservation space where wildlife exists without people. Once again, as IPRCs, we thank you for considering a number of our deliberations in the plenaries, in the panels, for listening to our stories and experiences, and most importantly, for the Kigari call to action that will be presented also. It, that is promising, and we hope that it will be acted upon. I thank you very much.